All right, it is reaction video time. Somebody just sent me this bad boy. I'm kind of nervous because it looks like somebody's mad at coffee. Let's see. Yeah, where I underwent two MRI brain scans. This first scan with no caffeine in my system. Then I downed oh. just one drink. Now uh -oh. my second MRI. This was my brain Looks before good. caffeine. That this was, was after. The difference was remarkable. It's like a 40% drop in the blood flow to your brain. So that's a lot. So before caffeine, with caffeine, the blood flow to my brain dropped Went about 40%. 40%. 40%. Really? Said it. He said it. They both said it. So it must be 40%. Uh, I was actually familiar with this is an old study. I'm surprised this is just now making the circulations on social media all of a sudden again. MRI is uh, just a way to visualize the brain. It's a pretty accurate way to visualize the brain. And uh, it doesn't surprise me what they reported, right? Constriction of blood vessels to the brain. And uh, that scares a lot of people who are habitual caffeine or coffee users because cutting off blood flow to the brain could cause some potential issues. But there's a lot more to the story than this because we have no clue. This woman's genetics, her health history, the type of coffee she was drinking, how she, she was metabolizing the coffee. I don't think it's any secret out there that the health benefits of coffee have been championed. For example, certain people who have a certain gene, and this is important, I'll get more into this gene in a second. It's called the CYP1A2 AA genotype. In those people, coffee can enhance cognitive function and focus and mental alertness. It's a, it means you're a fast caffeine metabolizer, basically, that CYP1A2 gene. In people who have that genotype, they actually respond quite favorably to coffee. And in fact, moderate coffee intake of one to three cups per day has been associated with a reduced risk of neurodegenerative diseases like Parkinson's and Alzheimer's, largely due to its antioxidant properties. That's not something that people who don't have that genotype frequently see, but people who do have that genotype that allows them to metabolize coffee quickly, it's not as much of an issue. Coffee is also, of course, rich in polyphenols and in antioxidants, very similar to green tea. That can lower the risk of chronic disease like type 2 diabetes, certain cancers. Uh, caffeine stimulates adrenaline production. Now, this is important. Uh, caffeine, same thing for nicotine, for example, it is a vasoconstrictive agent. Uh, that's because of what it does to cortisol and adrenaline, which then cause the vasoconstrictive effect. It also, though, can mobilize fatty acids for energy, uh, increasing how much fat that you burn. It, it increases endurance, right? It helps to, to decrease your rating of perceived exertion during exercise. For those of us who like to have a cup of coffee before our morning poop, we know it supports gut motility. It's even been shown to promote the growth of beneficial gut bacteria, which can be helpful for individuals who want to support their digestive system. And coffee has a lot of good things going for it. Now, here's where if you were to go into an MRI brain scan and you were to see super scary effects like 40% loss of blood flow to the brain, this is why something like that might happen to you or other reasons that coffee might not be a good idea or at least should only be consumed in moderation. You remember that CYP1 gene I mentioned, the double A genotype? Well, people who have the AC or the CC genotype, those are slow caffeine metabolizers. It lingers in the system. And those people do not experience the same cardiovascular benefits as people who are fast caffeine metabolizers genetically. And in those people who are slow caffeine metabolizers, we see increased risk for things like hypertension and heart attacks once folks exceed one cup per day. That's why it's important to get your genes tested. Now, the restriction or the constriction, I should say, of cerebral blood vessels reducing brain blood flow is not only something you might see if you're a slow caffeine metabolizer, but you also might see that type of effect if you have poor blood flow to the brain. You're eating a diet that doesn't support good cardiovascular health. You're prone to migraines or other neurological conditions. Again, you can't take this N equals one scan that you see on Instagram and apply that to you. But it is something that can happen in some people in response to coffee. Uh, if you have a pre-existing heart condition, hypertension, arrhythmia, that's another reason to be cautious with coffee, especially if you have a pre-existing cardiovascular issue and you're a slow caffeine metabolizer, it can increase your risk of a heart attack. Is the coffee clean, right? We know that people have a deleterious response, including a vasoconstrictive response and uh, an irritable response to coffee that is not clean. 
sipping microwave coffee out of a styrofoam cup that's pumping you full of microplastics or say drinking coffee that is uh, full of mold and mycotoxins, a notorious issue with a lot of coffees that haven't been selected properly. To optimize your coffee intake, you need to consider the source of the coffee, how you're wired up genetically, your risk of cardiovascular disease or previous history of cardiovascular issues, electrical or otherwise, uh, your health status, your lifestyle. I mentioned the slow versus fast caffeine metabolizer, but there are other genetic variants that can cause caffeine to result in heightened anxiety. If you get a genetic test, there's a bunch out there. Uh, there's three by four, uh, there's a self decode. One that I've been using a lot lately because I'm, I'm now working with this organization is 10 X. They have one called a precision genetic test that tells you everything you need to know about how your body and your brain respond to caffeine. These would all be ways that you can test things like CYP1A2, ADORA2A, COMT variants to see, Hey, how am I genetically hardwired to handle caffeine? And would I be a candidate to switch to decaf or caffeine free herbal beverages? You might just be somebody who has to wean yourself off of coffee. Understand when you see something like this, yes, that might be a problem for you. And no, it might not be. Get your genes tested, look into your health, your lifestyle, your sourcing of coffee and uh, select your coffee wisely. If you like this video, you can leave a thumbs up, a review, a comment, uh, share it, just uh, anything that helps me see that you like me doing reviews. If they're helpful, um, I'll keep doing them. So subscribe to the channel. Thanks for watching.